Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about NFL Draft Bust Analytics, uh, where we profile players that, in many cases, people view as busts, as players that didn't live up to expectations, usually players that were drafted in the top, in the top five to top ten of the NFL Draft, and didn't quite reach their full potential, and look at them on a, from a data perspective to give some clues as to why they were over evaluated. So in many ways, these are players that if the teams had been looking at the data or the analytics, they probably would not have made the same decision to pull the trigger on these players. Uh, so with all that stuff out of the way, if you're new to the, new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So let's begin with Ted Ginn Jr.'s profile. Now, um, in many ways, some people would debate whether or not Ted Ginn Jr. is a bust and that he had a fairly long NFL career. Uh, you know, this is someone that is still currently in the NFL in many ways. Um, so he's not exactly a bust bust, like a guy that, you know, is completely out of the NFL in four years. And I think he's even taken offense to some of the people saying that about him. But this more so highlights the fact that this was a player that was taken in the top 10 in the NFL draft who people expected to have Pro Bowl potential, all pro potential, um, those types of uh, potential marks when based on his data, he realistically didn't have that potential. Um, so first off, when you look at his production data, the first major question mark for Ted Ginn Jr. was the fact that he didn't have five-time All-Pro potential, three-time Pro All, three-time All-Pro potential, or three-time Pro Bowl potential based on his passing yardage market share production score. He definitely hit above the long-term starting threshold of 58 or higher, uh, but as you can clearly see, which, and honestly, Jed Ginn Jr. ended up becoming a long-term starting uh, wide receiver in many ways. But you can see here that he didn't have three-time Pro Bowl potential and he didn't have starter potential. So if I was to show you this data back then, would you take a wide receiver in the top 10 who did not have the same traits that a three-time Pro Bowl player, three-time All-Pro player, or five-time All-Pro wide receiver had based on their production data? I don't think you would. On top of that, when you look at the averages of the position, the average All-Pro score, the average Pro Bowl score, and the average starter score, Ted Ginn was below the All-Pro average score significantly, significantly below the Pro Bowl average score, and also even, even below the starter average score. So I ask you again, would you take a wide receiver that didn't hit the high, high quality thresholds when it comes to his overall production data? Probably not. And then lastly, when you look at his athleticism traits, um, all I could find was a speed score for him. And he had a decent speed. He had 61.41 speed score, not 90 plus percentile. I mean, uh, again, Ted Ginn Jr. is very fast, but he's also not the biggest player ever. Um, so he did have at least one all pro such pro bowl potential athleticism trait in terms of his speed. But I ask you again, you have a guy that has kind of an okay speed score, but doesn't have Pro Bowl potential or All-Pro potential based on his production data, why would you draft a player like that in the top 10? So again, a lot of times what analytics does is analytics is not about putting numbers into a thing and then popping out all the players that are going to be great. It's about asking significant questions to evaluators about you think that this player is a Pro Bowl player. You think that this player is all pro player. You think this player has potential to be this great, uh, if you will. Based on the data, he doesn't have the same traits that those other players had when it comes to his production data or when it comes to his athleticism data or so on and so forth. And that's honestly what the point of analytics is. It's about giving you all the reasons why a player is going to fail or why a player is not going to hit the expectations that you have of that player, at least in Ted Ginn's case. He didn't hit the expectations that people thought he had as a top 10 overall selection. Um, and he's definitely not a bust in terms of just not going on to have an NFL career. But you can clearly see that based on his data and based on his overall production and, and athleticism traits, that this is someone who should never have been drafted in the top 10 and probably shouldn't have been drafted until day two to even day three if you're actually taking risk assessment into it. Uh, so ultimately, that's Ted Ginn Jr.'s overall profile in terms of why he busted, or at least why he didn't live up to his expectations. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter 
at Gemmetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.